Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where last episode we stuck this hulking thing in space, which I'm reliably informed looks a little bit like a penis, but you know, we're making robot uh, robots? Rockets. How else is it going to happen? And as I was waiting for my, uh, my, my boost window, this happened, uh, which I think you'll agree makes very boring videos, so I'm going to let you watch that, and this boost. And that's about all I did. Um, it was just straight burning. We're in here with something along the lines of 10 meters per second delta phi left to do. And um, we got this magnificent orbit. Isn't it amazing? Um, as, as my first sort of like orbital injection for a far flung planet, I think I did all right there. Um, it could have been a little bit more finessed, but I, I, I'm not one for finessing. I just brute force, oh, get it in there. Now, of course, this mission itself is going to live, not to Jewel. Um, though I do really wish that I'd swung by Jewel, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later when I get out there. Right now, um, we'll have a look at that periapsis, and we're somewhere in the region of one and a half billion meters away, which sounds like a lot, but for me, it's not too bad, right? So here I've been doing a little bit of uh, messing about with the orbital maneuvers at the point that our uh, orbital planes intersect, uh, in the vain hope that I could possibly get some sort of uh, aero braking done around Jewel, because, you know, it's a gas giant. How else are you going to slow down? I mean, what are you going to do? Spend all your fuel just kind of like breaking your orbit? What kind of fool would do that? Um, so here I've turned, I've had to turn the maneuver node off because all the text is, is, is were overlaying on top of each other and I couldn't see. Um, and I was like, yeah, I could do this by hand. Of course I could do this by hand. I'm a seasoned pilot, me. I, I, I do these things all the time, right? Honest. Yeah. So the numbers are starting to get quite small and um, I really wish I'd carried on with this burn because I think I would have made it. But the thought occurred, what if these numbers aren't accurate? Am I going to plow straight into Jewel itself? It, that, that would bring my mission to an end really quickly. Which brings us to entering the Jewel system in this manner. <laughs> You'll have to believe me when I said that this isn't how I intended to do it when I started this mission. Uh, I was thinking like a long shot, um, straight into the into the gas uh, gas cloud of Jewel, um, break my orbit down, uh, break my velocity down, uh, scoop down through through live, and then just like be sat in a nice orbit around that that nice little watery moon. So here I am wasting fuel. Like the fool that I am! Um, it's great, right? And I just sit here, watching numbers go down, which is really boring. So I'm going to take this opportunity to skip on a little bit to this next bit, where we start having some encounters and stuff, which is all very interesting. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've wasted fuel, as I've been saying, just kind of like throwing it out the back end, hoping to, to, to slow myself down, because I'm an in inexperienced pilot like that. And then I find this, and I mean, like, cut, cut all engines. Cut the engines, it's time to examine what we have here. Um, it turns out that I'd managed to get some sort of, like, uh, gravity break from Tylo, and I'm like, no, 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 Tylo's not close enough. Once again, I wish I'd done it that way, but Tylo is indeed not close enough. So I, I'm going to aero break that. Why do I keep saying aero break? I'm going to break myself down once again through the power of my nuclear engines. <laughs> um, why I, I, I've not given up on the aero breaking at this point. This, this is the problem. This is why I didn't just wait for my periapsis and do it at the most efficient point. I really wish that I'd done that now, guys, so that I could be sat here going, look at this efficient route that I flew, guys. Instead, we're here going, what a noob. I'd, I'd be going, what a noob. I mean, look at this noob. What's he doing here? <laughs> i got to stop. After all that, I, I eventually just give up on this aero braking business. I've obviously done something wrong somewhere, so I'm just like, you know what? Let's just fly down to the planet. Well, I say fly down. Let, let's fall down to the planet, as that is essentially what we're doing. And uh, go see if we could just get into an orbit. Like, just any orbit. I don't, I don't mind anymore. I, I, I feel like everything's gone wrong. Um, and at some point coming up soon or maybe the next time, I, I, I realised that 
Yeah, no, actually, I'm quite close to the, the, the orbit I want to have, or at least my periapsis is, is quite close to the, the orbit that I'm actually after. Um, remember, of course, we're after Joule at this point, uh, not Joule, after Lies at this point, not Joule. Um, and if you look, my periapsis right there is very, very close. So uh, I start off by going like, maybe I can just bring my periapsis in line and then I'm like, no, wait, wait, this is the same thing that I was trying to do out there. Let's forget that, have another plan. There we go, stopped my engines. I, I kind of drift in a little bit and start maneuvering about and seeing what I can, I can find. And, and that, this one pops up. This is quite good, well, maybe I can work with this. So I, I tweak my speed up and down. Um, now, the the one thing that I forgot to do here was find out how thick Lyth's atmosphere was. Like, the main problem with this, uh, and uh, indeed this is why I'm sending these probes, is that I know nothing about any of these planets. I haven't looked at the wiki, I haven't gone and found out what's going on, I just wanted to go and do that. This is probes. If, if, if you know the information, why are you sending the probes, right? That's quite a lovely shot of getting close to Lyth there. Um, quite happy with some of the shots I got on, on this actually as it happens. Oh, there's one of the moons eclipsing the, the sun as well. I mean, I completely missed that when I was uh, recording this. Um, so I have a, have a quick play, move the maneuver node about, see if I can get down quite low. I'm thinking like 55, 55 kilometers. Sounds about right to be uh, grazing an atmosphere, right? right? I thought it was. I really did. <laughs> um, but we'll see how that goes later on. Um, so there's Jewel and Life, there's the, the planet whose influence I am under, and the moon that I am ha heading towards. And with the smallest bit of time acceleration, uh, we should be able to get down towards like, the manoeuvre node I'd set. I actually overshot a little bit, uh, it's something I do quite a lot, I could probably get on top of that. And we start this quite photogenic burn down towards the, uh, well, bringing our orbit down towards the atmosphere of live. Uh, that is live on screen right there. Obviously it's moving a hell of a lot faster than I am at this point. So we're going to let it catch up to us. Because, you know, that, that's, that's the, uh, <laughs> the efficient way of doing things. Uh, you'll notice that my nav ball is bouncing around everywhere. This is because I didn't quite make the probes exactly the right, the, the same weight as each other. So the, the whole time that I'm boost, uh, accelerating, especially at this full throttle, um, my, my ship is just trying to pitch around everywhere and it's got a little bit of a roll to it as well. It, you know, just a testament to my uh, design skills. So I am constantly on my keys trying to move up and down. You'll see now just in that small amount of time how far my ship had uh, come off of the, the central point that I was aiming for. Um, and somewhere uh, very soon I decided, yeah, like that, I decided that I don't need the maneuver node anymore. All the numbers are just getting in the way. Um, <coughs> It seems to be a, uh, a technique that I'm using more and more often as I, I use the, the, the maneuver node to get myself roughly in the right direction and then just fly it by the seat of my pants. Um, and, and there we go, we are in uh, a capture orbit. Um, I think 36 kilometers might be a bit close and move it up to 55. I Again, like there's many times in this uh, this little mission report here that I wish I had stuck with the thing that I uh, where I'd stopped first, you know, stop uh, accelerating first. Unfortunately, you know, I'm not, I'm not one for reloading and going back and doing things again. I'd rather just uh, send another mission with a different objective. But that's all for a later time. Right now we're coming in on live. In fact, we're getting down to, um, oh, what is that? Hundreds of thousands of meters as opposed to the millions of meters. So uh, yeah, it's time to start thinking about what's going on here. Uh, at this point, I'm still not sure whether I'm gonna make it into the atmosphere or not. I, uh, obviously, I'm still hundreds of thousands of meters up, but I've noticed that my atmosphere bar hasn't even like blipped. Uh, and I'm starting to get a little bit worried because obviously it's a new, new environment. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. So I throw myself a maneuver node in. This is uh, if all else fails, do this, Steve. And I get the nice little countdown timer at the bottom there. Um, that, that, that's possibly like the one pro tip I could possibly give. Always set maneuver nodes. You get a nice little countdown for what's going on. Because, you know, everyone likes countdowns, right? 
So spinning around, trying to find my uh, my my. It's not waypoint, is it? It uh, my manoeuvre node. But uh, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, and we just kind of buzz on through, seeing what's going on. Um, uh, now, post post recording, that I noticed that my atmosphere bar has, has blipped a little bit. So I was in fact inside the atmosphere at this point, but not enough to actually make any uh, appreciable difference upon my velocity. So I fire up the nuclear engines and bring that bring that orbit into line or spin myself out wildly because I've not balanced my probes properly so swing it back down fire back up again I, I'm sure you all know how, how this goes and just wait for that nice yellow bar to come down and tell me that I have a circular orbit achieved already we've joined up the two ends brought ourselves out of hyperbolic parabolic orbit which one is it? do they come in a parabolics yeah they come in on parabolics um, uh, sorry by they I mean comets I was just trying to see with the long period comets um, yeah uh, I'm gonna stop rambling now let's watch this pretty spaceship go around the planet look there's land on an ocean moon <laughs> Um, and you can still notice that I am drifting off my target, taking us more and more off that beautiful equatorial orbit that we're always after. In fact, now that I look at it, I'm 45 degrees off that equatorial orbit anyway. Kind of helps for the things I wanted to do here. So I uh, uh, post the point, I'm going to say that that's what I actually intended to do. And look at this beautiful orbit that I've put myself into. Isn't it wonderful, guys? It's beautiful, right? And all that brings us to the releasing of the probes. Now you see here I extended my solar panel of my, my scanner and it went through my submarine just a little bit. Um, I was a little bit worried about that, but I thought, you know what, this, this is going wrong in so many ways already, so let's just see what happens. And it turns out it just pushes you away from the spacecraft at a, uh, not, not overly fast rate, but a, a fast enough rate to, uh, make you happy with the distance you're not just floating right next to it so i may even use that as a deployment system in uh later missions it, it seems quite a effective way uh, uh not not a troubling way anyway uh so here i am messing about with my maneuver mode um i i've, I've got into a fairly polar orbit with my my main deployment vessel but that's not the ideal orbit, is it? You, you want to have it polar. Um, and I spend a good deal of time mucking around here trying to get close to polar orbit that I was really kind of after. Um, obviously, I, I knew I had to get close and then adjust again and adjust a bit later because, uh, you know, that's how trying to get over a specific point works in Kerbal, well, in, in, in all orbital dynamics, I should imagine. I'm not an astrophysicist, I don't know exactly, but I'd assume that the, these dynamics are fairly close, as it's just two-body ballistics. So I set my uh, my probe up, and I spend a little bit of time thinking, like, what should I fire? I've got two types of engines on here. I've either got my, um, my four rocket motors, or I've got my um, xenon gas, um, the ion drive, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, I, I believe that I decided to give my uh, xenon a go. And I noticed there's a problem. Where's that nice blue glow? What's going on? Now, I've had this recurring problem in Kerbal that I keep putting my xenon tanks, uh, not my xenon tanks, my xenon engines on backwards. Um, it takes me a few moments to realise this, and I'm just like, oh, I've, I've done it again, haven't I? All right, so I set, I set up my, um, my my rocket engines, my, my standard liquid fuel and oxygen engines, and try and burn through to the um, the orbit that I'd set myself up for, right? Um, and you see that I'm mainly headed towards the right the right spot. I run out of fuel, and I'm like, all right, that that should be fine. I was just turning, and then I saw that. Like, did you, yeah, that. I am headed planetwards, and I have no idea why. Uh, as I said, I'm not really up for reloading, so I, I try and use the push of the Xenon engine. Hopefully, like, it is moving me. I don't know. But the thing I forgot, well, the thing that I realised very, very shortly is I need to turn 180 around, just like this. Um, and, and, and I hope... Just hope it's got some push. It is actually moving me. 
Um, rest assured, when, the moment I go back to Kerbin, I'm going to uh, correct this little mistake. But I just, I don't think I can get this back into orbit. So uh, you notice that I, I get resigned to this fact shortly. Um, in fact, I've even run out of electric charge. After accepting the fact that uh, it's all lost, it's all over, I, I've lost yet another spaceship. Um, I boost up and think, well, we might as well watch it crash. It might be cool. Um, we watch the shadow come down in, into uh, Jewel. Uh, I'm really sorry that this happened on the night side. Um, uh, it seems to be the recurring theme of Kerbal. Like they're, they're like, there's only a small section that's actually night if you think about like the 3D space that you um, inhabit. Uh, it's, it's not half the space, is it? It's half the planet, but it's not half the space. Yet still, you always seem to find yourself in that night spot when things like this are happening. Though it does show up the re-entry effects kind of well. I mean, that looks quite nice, right? Uh, a friend of mine was saying at this point, I, if only you could have a Kerbal on the floor watching that come crashing in, I'm sure it'd be quite spectacular. Um, so instead we get to watch it from this point of view, the, the sun's coming up just for, just for this crash, and boom! That went well, didn't it? So, after the spectacularness of that last one, I come out to my <coughs> delivery system and perform a, a, a cheeky little uh, deorbiting burn, um, decouple my glider, boom, like so. Um, I think I then switch to it and give it the smallest of burns to get out of range as I am smack bang in front of the, the, the ship right now and that, that's not at all where we want to be. Um, take control of this, turn round and burn myself back up to a stable orbit because we still have one more probe on there that we need to deal with. Uh, this of course is the submarine, it's kind of the, 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 the major point of coming out here, uh, which is a bit of a shame really. This of course is the second of my data collection probes. Uh, this one is here to get atmospheric pressure versus altitude, temperatures, things like this. Uh, it's mainly the atmospheric pressure so I can know what sort of glider to provide um, Jeb when he comes out this way because obviously he needs to set foot on each one of the moons and get back out again before um, going to, to, to Joule itself and sampling the tasty tasty atmosphere there which is of course the ultimate aim of this uh, endeavour. Though I am getting a little bit ahead of myself there. Uh, so we watch the uh, ever interesting sun flare coming through uh, Lithe's uh, atmosphere, that's the word I was looking for, and very shortly I realised that something's not quite right here. Every time I try to point uh, towards my go direction, I can't remember the word for it right now, but <laughs> every time I try and point that way I'm um, actually pointing backwards and I realised that I was controlling from this back um, docking port which was a little bit inconvenient. So here I am uh, something like 70 kilometres up in the air and th there's islands everywhere, look at them all! I'm like yeah maybe I can get this down. Um, I, I notice that I'm just starting to come into the atmosphere, so I, I fire up all my science because this is why we're here. Um, and I like to keep a nice little graph on screen whilst I'm doing science because graphs just feel like science, you know. Uh, um, I collapse that down before realizing that I can just turn it off on the UI, which is a bit more useful. And then we take a low, leisurely plummet. Um, I say low and leisurely plummet. We are currently going something on order of 200 me uh, 2,000 meters per second. That is a kilometer a second. Uh, that is quite fast. But it seems low and slow and leisurely when you are this far up. So, all my science has kicked in and we're starting to see some readings coming through. Unfortunately, my tiny screen is too too blurry to re read that upon, though I do have the, the raw data that I can uh, compare at any point, which is quite nice. So the the heating shock comes in, and I'm, I'm holding steady, I, I, I try and nose up a little bit, try and uh, shed a bit more, bit more velocity before realising, you know what, why not, let's just drop down. Um, and I look around, I'm like, oh my. That's a long way to take a glider with such limited amount of fuel. So I, I think that um, boosting myself while I'm in the higher atmosphere will get me most uh, fuel efficiency. 
and I do have quite a small amount of fuel though I should have boosted a bit more upwards I kept on like trying to nose towards that direction that I've forgotten the name of um, but there we go my set my course is now set no, no matter what happens now I have no more fuel um, possibly not the best way to go about a landing such as this but we'll, we'll see what happens anyway about five kilometers six kilometers up in fact I do, do correct myself uh, all the science is going well and I noticed that I am shedding speed at quite a rate a uh, quick look around me shows me that I've got no land to, uh, no land to aim for uh, and as we all know water is a very unforgiving surface in Kerbal uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to put this down but I am generally impressed with the way that the uh, ship has been handling and generally performing in this uh, I, I don't feel this probe could have gone any better it, it's caught all its data exactly how it's meant to and has uh, indeed performed up to it all its specifications so we're coming out of down time acceleration here uh, and I'm, I'm thinking right let's try and get the nose up shed as much speed as I can and and just see if we can su make this probe survive because it's always nice to have something that the that is there something that just stays put and it is a, a, a definite marker but then this happens uh, did you see it leave did you see it go so everything's been destroyed but there's this marker point going off over there now I'm, I'm fairly quick-witted and switch over to it and look at this it set itself up as a, 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 a wiggler drive and this just goes and goes and goes and goes uh, in fact it goes for such a long time that um, unfortunately it doesn't make escape velocity because I do uh, a very what I now know to be a very silly thing I should have just left it but I went to my map um, just to see how far it was going and obviously in that time the SAS managed to sort itself out that that was the wiggle that had got us going but like seriously I'm now going to jump through it a couple of times there's land there's jewel and that's it just hanging about uh, I eventually had to just like quit out because it wouldn't let me leave it in flight and yeah it all went very weird at this point but isn't that cool here we are with my submarine um, I, I've skipped the deorbiting process I think we've all seen rockets burning um, retrograde prograde and retrograde they were the things I'd forgotten earlier oh and I kept on trying to point prograde there we go sorry A little... right so coming down um, you can see I'm collecting all the same well not all the same data but all the important data um, that I I really wanted to collect on the glider um, thus rendering the glider obsolete but you know it was fun right wasn't it fun guys remember that little winglet the, 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 yeah that was good so yeah uh, uh, I've got this wonderful sort of um, sunrise shot for, for my landing here uh, I'm a little dubious about how how thick the atmosphere is so I've put my parachute out early to try and shed as much speed as possible um, and finally just going to bring it down through these last few meters per second um, as always making sure I'm not warping as I hit the floor because that, that would just like times four all the numbers and you, you don't really want that bracing ourselves and it all breaks to pieces well thank you very much for joining me for this adventure guys it's been a blast for me I hope it's been a blast for you and I will see you next time bye bye